Hi, everybody. Uh, sorry for being a little late today, but uh, my name is Julie Burgundy, and I am the Public Education Coordinator at the Dole Institute of Politics in Lawrence, Kansas. And I want to thank you for joining me today. Today's theme is all about celebrating Kansas Day. Now, you may say, Julie, it's not Kansas Day. Well, when you live in Kansas, every day is Kansas Day. But also, today is April 29th. And Kansas Day is celebrated on January 29th. So we're just a couple, few months behind, but it is the 29th day of the month. And so we're gonna be celebrating that uh, today. So everything's about Kansas today. And you may notice I'm also in a different uh, location here in the stacks, in the archives. Uh, behind me is the object wall. So we have things from other countries, sports memorabilia, uh, political jokes, um, just uh, some, these are some uh, collections of the Dole uh, special collections that we have here in the stacks. So we're gonna be looking at some objects today as well. But back to Kansas Day, it is celebrated January 29th, and Kansas was admitted as a state to the Union in 1861. And this was signed by President James Buchanan. So this is right before uh, the Civil War. So we have the Union and the South, but Kansas was a 34th state admitted to the Union. And some Kansas symbols that I want to talk about today are about the Kansas seal, which is kind of hard to see in this picture here, but you see that circle there, and that is actually our Kansas state seal. And a better picture of it here. And this one's just been colored in. And we have ad astra per astra, which it means to the stars through difficulties. And can you guess how many stars would be here? I've given you a number already this morning. Uh, there's gonna be 34 stars on there because we're the 34 states in 1861. And then we also, everything in this picture also has a symbolism of the sun rising and uh, wagon trains and uh, beautiful rolling hills, all of which we have here in Kansas. But some other Kansas symbols that I want to discuss today is the state flower. Does anybody know what our state flower is? Hmm. It's very pretty. And I bet you see lots of them coming over the summer. Uh, and so in 1903, Kansas named the wild native sunflower our state flower. And it's common throughout Kansas and has historic symbolism, which speaks of our frontier days. Uh, what about our state bird? Have it, any of you seen those uh, flying around lately? It's yellow and black, it has spots on it. How about our Western Meadowlark? In 1937, that was named our state bird. And it was actually chosen by our state bird by a vote of Kansas school kids, just like you. Another one is our state tree. In a few weeks, we'll be seeing lots of this floating through the air if you live near one of these. It's called a cottonwood. Cottonwood tree is our state tree, and that was named in 1934. And so they, the pioneers that came through, the homesteaders, routinely planted these fast-growing cottonwoods for shade and warmth and cooking fuel. It's been called the pioneer tree of Kansas. And I have a few of these in my backyard, and it seems like it's snowing sometimes because there's so much cotton. But it is our state tree, so we gotta love it. Uh, another one is our state animal. Any guesses on our state animal? Big, brown, and then it's grass. It's actually our American buffalo. And it was the most abundant grazing animal in all of North America. Now we have not that many buffalo now because uh, they were hunted and things. So we don't have as much as many, but it's still our state animal. I'm still very proud of it. Did you know we have a state reptile? 
Yeah, the ornate fox turtle was designated as our state reptile in 1986 and is one of only two terrestrial turtles that live in the Great Plains. We live in the Great Plains. And so terrestrial means living on land. So maybe you've seen one of these box turtles around either in uh, crossing the road or the ditch. So we need to we need to protect our state reptile and our state insect. It's an insect that makes a buzzing sound, and we can even eat not the insect itself, but eat some things that come from this insect. It is the honeybee. It's one of the most familiar insects and valuable insects because it produces honey and beeswax. Because honeybee is our state insect as of 1976. Now my last state symbol, there's a few more like state soil and all that, but my last one is a relatively new one just in the last few years, our state fossils. Because you know we have state fossils. Yes, it is the Tylosaurus, which is a marine animal, and the Pterodon, which is a flying animal. And these are state fossils, so they lived long ago, and they are actually no longer alive now, but we see their bones and things. And coincidentally, both, neither the Tylosaurus or Pterodon is a dinosaur. Because a long, long time ago, when dinosaurs did exist during the Mesozoic era, most of Kansas was eaten. We were in a giant sea. And those fossils that we find here in Kansas either lived in the sea or they flew through the air. So they did not live on land. So technically, they're not dinosaurs. It's a pretty cool science fact today. Hi, Sherry, <laughs> friend from uh, Science City, who also talked about fossils today. <laughs> uh, so learning about our state symbols is really important. And I wanted to read a poem for you that I found in our archive about Kansas. And I think it's very moving. And I wish, while I read these poems, that we could play Home on the Ring. But the speakers are a little... Uh, finicky today, but just imagine Home on the Rain being played in the background as I, as I see. Across this open prairie rolls Kansas far and wide, surrounded now by wheat fields where cowboys used to ride. Many a cattle trail would lead down these still wide open plains, but now the blue skies up above are filled with shining plains. Oh, the air so clear on a given day, you can see for many a mile, Coming home to Kansas is like the warmth of your best friend's smile. Sunflowers make up the yellow brick road that leads to the pot of gold, bringing us home to the land of Oz in the stories we've been told. Time has changed the scenery some, and progress is all around, but it hasn't lost that Western touch like neighbors in your own hometown. Oh, the air so clear on a given day, you can see for many a mile, and coming home to Kansas is like the warmth of your best friend's smile. And this was a beautiful poem written by Phyllis Macy Mills. And we found this in the archive. You notice it has a plastic sheeting over it, so I don't have to touch it with my, my regular hands. So I think that's a very moving poem. Some other things that I found for you today, I want to share with you on the screen here, are a collection of postcards. And these postcards are pretty cool and interesting. And here is our first one. And here we go. We have the state of Kansas state flag. We have that uh, field of blue in the background. With Kansas on the bottom, and then we have that great state seal in the middle, and it says "Ad Astra per Astra." How many stars are on there again? Thirty-four. We have the farming and the wagon trains and cabins. 
and the beautiful sunsets that we also see here in Kansas. So these are all postcards that we have in our collection. And this is actually a postcard of a picture of a banner that says our 100th birthday. So on January 29th, 1861, we became a state. So 100 years later, 1961, they uh, had a big centennial birthday celebration. Does anybody know what centennial means? Centennial means 100 cents. So just like how we have 100 cents and a dollar. Centennial means 100. So how many birthdays has Kansas had? If our very first was in 1861, and is the year 2020 now, on January 29th, 2020, we celebrated our which birthday? I know that's a lot of math. Got some big numbers. But 2020 minus 1861 is actually 159. So we just celebrated our 159th birthday. Kansas is getting old. <laughs> Here's another postcard on the state of Kansas in a map form. And we have different cities highlighted here uh, along different highways. And on the bottom it says where the east ends and the west begins. And if you look real close on the far right, you see Lawrence. And that is represented by the Campanile, the uh, bell tower uh, symbolizing World War I. So Campanile is there signifying Lawrence. And Russell, Senator Bob Dole's hometown, is kind of near the middle with it looks like a brown church with a green roof. That is the town of Russell. Here's another postcard, also celebrating the centennial, so 100 years in 1961. And this one actually has a stamp and the postal stamp that shows it was sent uh, out of Council Grove in 1961. So pretty cool to see stamps. Sometimes we see stamps also in our archive, especially with constituent letters. It's pretty cool to see all the different kinds of stamps. And then here's another poem called The Call of Kansas on the back of a postcard. Look on the bottom, we can even see that somebody wrote in Mama. <laughs> They're writing to their mom. And this is one of my favorites. This is, says, greetings from Kansas has beautiful sunflowers on it. All about our state flower. Now this next postcard, I want you to see if you can find something wrong about it. Is there something different about this picture? Maybe something silly? I want you to take a look here. It looks like we have a building, and the title of that building is Allen Fieldhouse, Kansas University. And so that is where uh, Kansas KU players play basketball in Allen Fieldhouse. But if you look in the foreground on the grassy area, what do you see? Does this look like a normal thing that happens either today in 2020 or maybe 100 years ago? Could be, but it looks a little out of place. I see cowboys on horses, and I see buffalo, and then I also see a turtle. Yeah, there's a turtle in this picture. Now, do you think this is a common occurrence? Does this happen all the time? I don't know if this has ever happened where we had wild buffalo roaming on the University of Kansas campus. Maybe before all the buildings were built, so maybe probably not after. So this is a silly picture. I want to investigate the next one to see if we can make any more inferences about what's going on in these pictures. Whoa! That is a crazy corn cob. On the top it says, Our County Fair Contest on Kansas Corn. But that's giant! That's crazy! There is a gentleman standing on a corn cob that's very, very large, as big as a wagon. That's crazy. Let's keep going, see what we can find. Ooh, 
it says a load of good Kansas apples. And this one actually says copyrighted photograph 1909. Oh, these are really old. And so we have a lot of apples. Those apples are even bigger than that horse. Hmm, something fishy's going on here. Now, in 1909, did we have computers? No, that was a long time ago. We didn't have computers back then. Well, then how do we explain all this crazy fruit and vegetables? This is actually uh, a form, a very, very early form of Photoshop. And so even though they didn't have computers or Photoshop back in 1909, there was a, a group of artists that put together these pictures and would put unique and crazy things on these pictures. So giant apples, huge corn. Let's see what the next one says. Ooh, got some grasshoppers. And this one says a Kansas airship. And this one also says 1909, I believe, 1939. And that is a giant grasshopper. And it looks like a little kid is along for the ride. Got the American flag going. Do you think this is real? How do they do this? There's another one. I'm not sure if those grasshoppers are really pulling that wagon full of hay. But it says down on the farm. Hmm. These are some silly pictures of artists trying to do Photoshop before Photoshop actually exists. And then here we have a beautiful country club setting in Ottawa, Kansas. It says 1955. But what's in the water? I don't think we'd see those either today or in 1955. Because those are dinosaurs and a Dimetrodon. I don't think they belong in Ottawa, Kansas. At least in the 20th century, maybe millions of years ago. But that's another crazy picture. And then this last one is my favorite. On the bottom it says, in Ottawa, Kansas, during floods, nobody but the turtles get excited. So this is also from 1955. They had historic flooding in uh, much of Northeast Kansas. And this is a picture of Ottawa. So we have people walking on the sidewalks. We have cars. We can kind of tell from the picture that these cars are from the 1950s, which makes sense, since that copyright at the bottom says 1955. We have Kramer Drugs, First National Bank. But what is unique about this picture? There's turtles everywhere, and they're giant. <laughs> we have giant turtles taking over Ottawa, Kansas. And in the back on the street, can you see the caterpillar too? <laughs> So that's a crazy picture. But I think these are really cool. These are called tall tales. And so these were made before Photoshop. And these pictures that I showed you, uh, the ones about Kansas and tall tales and others are found on our uh, online exhibit called Kansas Postcards. And I'll share that with you uh, towards the end of how you can uh, get the link for that. Now I also want to flip you around and show you some pictures here. And these are, this is the box of postcards that uh, I was just showing you from. So we have a whole bunch of these postcards. And I took out a few that I wanted to show you also in person. And this one is called Board Governor of Kansas says Arthur Kaffer for clean, efficient, economical state government. So remember his face and name. We're going to talk about him a little later on. And then we also have the Eisenhower home. And that looks like General Eisenhower, not yet President Eisenhower, but uh, Eisenhower from Abilene, Kansas, standing in front of the Eisenhower home, which is actually still standing. You can visit it uh in hopefully later this summer and this one is another tall tale postcard it says there's lots of big game in kansas if you go after it right and what do you see here so it looks like 
a man, and a very large rabbit. A rabbit's as tall as the guys. But I wanted to show this one to you because just to show you that these are real postcards. On the back of it, I flipped it over and it says 1909. And remember, postcards are kind of short notes that we would put in the, in the mail as opposed to writing a long letter. And they still have stamps on them. But this one was addressed in 1909. It says, Dear Edgar, opposite a young jackrabbit I can uh, recently captured near Grantville. Grantville is near Topeka. Uh, that bill of sale made me jealous. Hope it does you. Bill of sale meaning if they sold this rabbit, it would bring a lot of money. Now that Juan has left you, your place, I will tell you a secret. Ooh, a secret. Have been sick for three weeks, lost 20 pounds. Give your father, mother, and sister my best wishes. Ernest Hughes. And so remember, just a short note to tell people how they're doing and his secret that he's been sick. So he wanted to tell his friend that. Uh, so all those postcards, some of them are blank on the back and some of them do have those special messages. So I want to show you not only this from 1909, but also the cursive. And I think it's just really cool to look at those old postcards. Some other things I wanted to show you were these Kansas items. And first we he have here the Kansas State Seal. And this was actually given to Senator Bob Dole uh, from some fourth graders. So as a class project, they helped to color in this state seal, given from fourth graders. Another cool thing that I found in the collection is Kansas gold. These are grains and seeds of Kansas. And these are all uh, crops that you can find in Kansas. We have winter wheat, oats, barley, soybeans, sunflowers, millet, safflower, corn, rye, triticale, which is wheat. And pretty cool that we have this here. Some other items are, there's my light. <laughs> Some other items are all about sunflowers. We have this beautiful handmade tie. And the reason why I say handmade is because I can tell from the stitching that somebody made this out of fabric. And the fabric you buy from the store and they stitch it up all themselves. And here are some medallions. It says Kansas, 125 years. So I bet that came out when we're celebrating our 125th birthday. We also have Leavenworth, a medallion that says the first city of Kansas in 1854. So even before Kansas became a state in 1861. Here's some cool campaign buttons that Senator Dole used uh, for some elections. We have the sunflower with the elephant in the middle. And do we remember what elephants stand for? Which party? The Republicans. And I really like this one because it says, Bob's my boy. <laughs> and we also have some belt buckles here. And it says Kansas, we got the state seal on there, some sunflowers. Do you see the buffalo? And also a grain elevator. That's very common here. And this one's a Kansas State Fair, 1984, the great Kansas get together. We have a sunflower and a 4-H symbol and a tractor and lots of people all enjoying the fair that takes place in Hutchinson every year. And then some more sunflowers. We have handmade pins made out of woods that say Kansans for Dole 88. We have a beautiful fabric sunflower that was given to Senator Dole to wear in an event. And then also this handmade metal uh, piece of art that is in the shape of Kansas and has a beautiful, looks like windmill or a sunflower. 
This is Kansas at the bottom. So those are some really cool objects that we have here in the collection. Another thing I want to show you is this large Congressional Gold Medal. So Senator Dole is one of our uh, famous native Kansans. So we're definitely gonna celebrate him today and the state of Kansas. And this is a replica, albeit a very large replica, of the Congressional Gold Medal that was given to Senator Bob Dole on January 17th, 2018. So just a couple years ago. And the Congressional Gold Medal is the highest award uh, given by Congress. And we can see on the front of this coin, it says, Son of Kansas, Soldier, Statesman, Bob Dole. Has a picture of him in front of the Capitol building. And on the other side of this, it says, Act of Congress, 2017. So the Act of Congress was actually 2017, but it was given to it 2018. And this is a famous Senator Dole quote. For greatness lies not in what office you hold, but in how honest you are, in how you face adversity, and in your willingness to stand fast in hard places. We have a beautiful background of hay bales and windmill, rolling hills and trees, common to what we see here in Kansas. And so as Kansas statesmen, I think it's really important to celebrate this Congressional Gold Medal today as we learn about Kansas. Now, we also found this cool poster. It has lots of photographs on it. And do you recognize this guy? Yes, that is famous Kansas Senator Bob Dole, of course. And also President Eisenhower, which we, we talked about earlier on that postcard. He's also a native Kansan. And he grew up in Abilene. You can visit his presidential library and that boyhood home in Abilene. But some of the other important Kansans are Nancy Landon Cassebaum Baker. She was in the United States Senate for 19 years and also the first woman to represent Kansas in the Senate. And also the first woman elected on her own, meaning before this, there were women in the Senate, but they had been kind of adopted in because their husbands weren't in the Senate. So when their husbands passed away, the, the wife uh, took that Senate seat. Uh, that had happened historically before, but Nancy Cassebaum was the first woman elected in her own right without uh, having been led in by her, by her husband. Uh, some other interesting ones on this poster are Jim Mullane. Heard about him in Bleeding Kansas, Civil War era. Let's see, Charles Curtis. Here's a picture of him right here. And he was born in Topeka, actually, before Kansas even became a state. Born in 1860, the year before. Kansas became a state in 1861. So he was born in Kansas Territory. And he was in the House of Representatives and in the United States Senate and served as Vice President of the United States. And he is the first and only Native American to serve as Vice President of the United States. So very cool that we have that Kansas connection. And then another one here is Arthur Capper. So I showed you his picture before on that postcard, and he was born in Garnett, and he was the 20th governor of the state of Kansas. A fun fact about him is he was the first governor actually born in Kansas. So before past uh, Kansas governors were born outside of Kansas, but Capper was actually the very first Kansan who became governor. And he served the United States Senate for 30 years. And so not only are these famous Kansans, but when they represent us, the people of Kansas, 
when they are senators, they're representing the entire state. Every single person in Kansas they're representing. If they are a representative, meaning in the House of Representatives, they are representing a portion of the state, so their certain district. And so we know that Senator Dole served both as a representative and a senator, and so did many of these people. And so this is just a pretty cool poster that I wanted to show you, showing all this great history of Kansas senators. So I'm gonna put you back over here and uh, I also want to direct your attention. So I, I showed you this coloring page earlier. Now this is available as part of the Kansas Historical Society. So I'll post the link in the comments a little bit later. And so I invite you to uh, download this and color it in. There's gonna be pictures, not only of the state seal, but also of uh, our state animal, which is the buffalo. And our state bird, which is the Western Meadowlark. So you can draw really pretty pictures of those. And so it has lots of state symbols that uh, you can color in that coloring book. Another thing you could do with sunflowers, because I love sunflowers so much, is you could try to do some crafts with them. So I made these out of yellow paper plates. I took some brownish or blackish string and wrapped it around in a circle. And kept wrapping, kept wrapping, and then tied it off. And you can see the different petals, and they look really cool. So if you have some paper plates and some string around, I invite you to uh, explore with those. And I also want you to think about those postcards. I think these postcards are really awesome. So there's that beautiful one with the sunflowers. I have some different examples here. And they also have writing on the back. Remember those short messages? So I want you to create your own postcard. Get some paper, some colored pencils, some crayons, and make your own postcard. Here's another example of a beautiful sunflower, and the sun, and the sky, and the clouds. And you can also write a little message on the back. So we have who we're addressing it to, and here we have where we're going to put our stamp, and here's our message. So I invite you guys to make your own Kansas postcards. You can either send them in a mail to the relative, or you can send them to your little brother in the next room. I want you to make some Kansas postcards, because who knows? Maybe they'll end up in an archive in a hundred years, or maybe even less. All right. Well, next time, we're going to be discovering things about space in the archive. And next Monday is May 4th. So May the 4th be with you. And we're going to be looking at some things from space. So that can be documents and some pictures, all about space. And that's actually going to be our last discovery with the for a little while. Uh, but I've had a great time doing this with you twice a week. And I uh, invite you to check back those videos on our YouTube playlist. All right. Well, hope you had fun today learning about Kansas and all of our Kansas symbols. And I'll see you next time. See ya.